Now let me discuss about the cardiac action potential. If you take this cardiac action potential, this particular cardiac action potential, it differs significantly in different portions of the heart, right? So, it differs significantly in different portions of the heart, right? In different portions of the heart. All right now now another very important point what you need to remember is now what are these different portions of the heart what i mean to tell you here is the cardiac action potential in case of the sa node av node and as well as bundle branches is different from the action potential within the ventricular muscle cell so that is what i want to tell you that the cardiac action potential it differs significantly in different portions of the heart and not only that, if you take the velocity of the conduction of the impulse, right? The velocity of the conduction of the impulse is also different in different portions of the heart. Next. Now, you see here, in a resting state, that is at rest, the myocardial cell, it has a negative membrane potential. So, this is your RMP, that is resting membrane potential. So, at rest, alright, at rest okay at rest the myocardial cell right myocardial cell it has a negative membrane potential right it has negative membrane potential okay so the resting membrane potential of the cell it is negative right it might be around minus 80 now now whenever you give stimulus to the cardiac muscle fiber or the cardiac muscle cell so when the stimulation if it is above the threshold value right when the stimulus is given above the threshold value that will induce the opening of the voltage gated ion channels okay so whenever you give the stimulus so remember stimulation above the threshold value right stimulation above the threshold value will induce opening of right will induce opening of voltage gated ion channels right voltage gated ion channels so whenever the myocardial cell receives the stimulus above the threshold value there is opening of the voltage gated ion channels now once there is opening of this particular voltage gated ion channels now into this particular myocardial cell there is entry of the cations right so next what will happen is there is entry of cations right there is entry of the cations so cations are what they are positively charged ions right cations are your positively charged ions okay so once there is opening of the voltage gated ion channels now into that particular myocardial cell there is entry of this particular cations which are nothing but positively charged ions right so there will be entry of the cations inside the cell right entry of the cations inside the cell now once the positively charged ions enter into the cell that will result in depolarization right that will result in depolarization okay you see here so resting membrane potential it is negative right resting membrane potential it is negative now if the stimulus is given to this myocardial cell above the threshold value there will be opening of the voltage gated ion channels now the positive ions will enter into the myocardial cell 
Once the positive ions enter into the myocardial cell, that will result in the depolarization of the cell. So your phase 0, right, it is nothing but the depolarization of the cell. Is that clear? Now, the other important point is, there are important physiological differences between the nodal cells, that is SA node and AV node, right? There are important physiological differences between nodal cells and ventricular cells that give rise to a unique property to the SA node, right? So a very important point, this particular SA node, it has that intrinsic property of generating an impulse and that is what is called as the automaticity, right? So SA node has the property of automaticity, right? And this particular automaticity is what is necessary for the pacemaker activity, right? This is necessary for the Right? This is what is necessary for the pacemaker activity. Right? So now let me shortly revise here until now what we have discussed. Remember the cardiac action potential differs significantly in different portions of the heart. Now in a resting state, the myocardial cell has a negative membrane potential. Whenever you give a stimulus, right? stimulation above a threshold value induces the opening of the voltage gated ion channels. So once there is opening of the voltage gated ion channels, there is entry of the cations that is positively charged ions inside the cell and that will result in depolarization, right? That will result in depolarization. Next, the other point is there are important physiological differences between the nodal cells and ventricular cells that give rise to a unique property to the SA node. But remember, this particular SA node most importantly, it is having a property of what is called automaticity and this is very much necessary for the pacemaker activity of your SA node. Now let me discuss in detail about the resting membrane potential, phase 0, phase 1, 2, 3 and as well as phase 4. Now let me discuss about the resting membrane potential in detail. So. So if you take this particular resting membrane potential, remember resting membrane potential, it is phase 4 of your action potential, right? It is phase 4. So it is your phase 4 of the action potential. Now, now you need to know why is this particular resting membrane potential created or how is it caused? Remember the resting membrane potential it is caused by the difference in the ionic concentration and conductance across the cell membrane. Okay, So why is this resting membrane potential caused? This resting membrane potential Right, it is caused by difference in the ionic concentration. Right, difference in ionic concentration and as well as difference in the conductance of the ions across the cell membrane and conductance. of ions across the cell membrane. So this particular difference in the ionic concentration across the cell membrane and this particular difference of conductance of ions across the cell membrane, this is what it creates a resting membrane potential. Now you take the normal resting membrane potential. Normal resting membrane potential of the ventricles, right, of the ventricles, it is around minus 85 to minus 95 millivolts. Right, the normal resting membrane potential of the ventricle is around minus 85 to minus 95. 
95 millivolts. Now, the other point what you should remember here is this potential, right? This resting membrane potential is determined by the selective permeability of the cell membrane to various ions, right? Now, if you take the cell membrane of the myocardial cell, right? This particular cell membrane of the myocardial cell is selectively permeable to various ions. Now, the resting membrane potential is determined by the selective permeability of the cell membrane to various ions. Okay. So, resting membrane potential is determined by selective permeability. Right. It is determined by selective permeability of cell membrane to various ions right to various ions next now you need to know i have said you the word the cell membrane is selectively permeable to various ions now you need to know to which particular ion the cell membrane of the myocardial cell is selectively permeable remember a point here the membrane that is the cell membrane of the myocardial cell is most permeable to potassium all right so the cell membrane of the myocardial cell is most permeable right it is most permeable to the potassium and this particular cell membrane of the myocardial cell is relatively impermeable to other ions right it is relatively impermeable to other ions okay relatively impermeable to the other ions so it is cell membrane of the myocardial cell is most permeable to the potassium but it is relatively impermeable to the other ions therefore potassium is the main cation that determines the resting membrane potential of the cardiac cell right this is a very important multiple choice question here okay so resting membrane potential of the myocardial cell is determined by the potassium okay so remember a point here potassium is the main cation right is the main cation that determines right that determines the resting membrane potential of cardiac cell right that determines the resting membrane potential of the cardiac cell now let me tell you another important point this particular potassium it is the principal cation which is present within the cell there are certain ions which are present within the cell that is intracellular and there are certain ions which are present predominantly outside the cell now if you consider this as the cell now let me tell you the ions which are predominantly present intracellularly and the ions which are present extracellularly right the ions which are present intracellularly and the ions which are present extracellularly now the ions which are present intracellularly predominantly they are potassium and as well as the phosphate and not only that apart from the potassium and phosphate even the conjugate bases of the organic acids they are the one which are dominant anions which are present within the cell okay so within the cell what are all the various components which are present within the cell? One is your potassium. The other one is your phosphate. And the other one is your conjugate basis of the organic acids. Right? Conjugate basis of organic acid. So, these are the substances which are present intracellularly, right? These are the substances which are present intracellularly. Now, 
you take the ions which are present extracellularly right you take the ions which are present predominantly extracellularly the ions which are present predominantly extracellularly is your sodium and as well as the chloride right sodium and as well as the chloride so these are the ions which are present predominantly extracellularly all right so let me shortly revise about the resting membrane potential here remember resting membrane potential is your phase 4 of your action potential the resting membrane potential is caused by difference in the ionic concentration and conductance across the membrane of the cell when you take the normal resting membrane potential of the ventricle it is around minus 85 to minus 95 millivolts now this particular resting membrane potential is determined by selective permeability of the cell membrane to various ions now you take this particular cell membrane the membrane is most permeable to the potassium and it is relatively impermeable to the other ions therefore potassium is the main cation that determines the resting membrane potential of the cardiac cell now if you take the cell like there are certain ions which are present predominantly intracellularly and there are certain ions which are present predominantly extracellularly you take the ions which are present predominantly intracellularly they include potassium phosphate and conjugate bases of the organic acid and the ions which are present predominantly extracellularly are sodium and as well as the chloride 